So today with us, we have a special guest, uh, Ms. Janisha Brown. How you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say uh, we spotlighting you for all your hard work, your effort, determination, um, the way you hold it down and just uh, shining a light on you being an entrepreneur and excelling, being from Toledo, Ohio, you know, uh, and having a big, large following and having a lot of people that, you know, be booking and trying to get with you. I didn't hear stories about people getting mad in their feelings because they forgot to book and now they ain't got no spots because you do such great work. And, you know, we wanted to shine a light on that and, and have you help others who may be trying to get to where you at. So let's let's take it from the beginning. Um, when did you start doing hair? Um, 2002. 2002? Yeah, I didn't get my college license though until 2011. I moved to Columbus in 2009. So um, I wanted to go to cosmetology school here. So, yep, I graduated in 2011. And so, Was it somebody you seen in your family that did hair? Did you see somebody on TV? What made you just want to do hair? Is it something you just did and was good at? So one of my aunts, my dad's sister, my Ariba, she did hair. And, like, I used to always go up there and help her. Okay. So, But it was just, like, shampooing clients and stuff like that, just getting her stuff she needed. but. I'm more so like if I see something, I learn it just like that. I don't really have to have hands on with stuff. So I used to be like, oh, yeah, I can do that. So like before I started doing lots, like I hated doing lots, like absolutely hated it. Really? I did everything else except lots. So when did you know that locks, <laughs> locks was going to be what you was going to be your go to or your main dominant area because you you dope at it? Man, so um. Actually, you are you you familiar with Theo Pritchett? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it actually started with Theo. Like he used to have these parties downtown in Toledo, Starac on the dock. He yeah. used to have those parties, and I did his hair for one of the parties, and it just like it took off. Yeah. Everybody's like, "I want my hair how you did Theo's," and like it just took off. Like the rest is history. It's crazy. Wow, wow! Shout out Theo as well, man. That's <laughs> crazy. So, did you think that you were going to turn it into an entrepreneurship? You was going to turn it into your stream of income, a business, or did you just think you were just going to do it until something else came up? I thought I was going to do it until something else came up. <laughs> like, because wow. it used to take me so long to just like just do a retwist, but now I got down to like thirty minutes, like forty minutes tops, forty five. So it's like. Yeah. So Crazy. with with you being able to do hair, when did you say, okay, I'm gonna take this thing to the next level? I'm gonna come and start doing products. Like we got one of your products right here that I use, <laughs> natural hydrating scalp and hair oil. I use it. It helps a lot because my hair get the itching in between uh retwists yeah. or when I can't go a long time. I use this. So you know if everybody get with her on this because this really works. It's not too heavy, <laughs> it's not thick, it's not you know runny and everything. It's a good quality product. So when did you start getting into the product part of it? Um in 2018. I was working on like the end of 2017, but like 2018. Um 2018, like April 2018, I ended up dropping my product line. First, I was just doing oil, and then I did, well, actually, no, first I was doing the gel and the oil, and then I stopped doing the gel because it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't firm enough for me. It was too light, like, it was all organic, but yeah, it was too light, so I just discontinued that. And I just started doing like straight oil. Like everybody loves my oil. So like when the world shut down over the pandemic, I wasn't working, obviously. So I was just booming my oil. <laughs> uh, so how was that process with you with the pandemic was shutting down? You wasn't really doing hair. Was it certain people who hair you would do? Like what was like, did you think, dang, I might have to switch to something else? What was your mind frame in that time frame? Actually, I was cool. I'm a saver. So a lot of people, when they get into this industry, they get their money and because it comes so fast, they blow it. That's mm -hmm. not good because, you know, stuff happens. So I was prepared for that rainy day that came. Like right. I was good. So um, that's another thing you, you have to say when you can't just like blow your money just because it's coming. So um, I opened, I had an IRA account. I didn't have to touch nothing. No, I didn't have to touch none of my money. I was good. So that was, that was good, like during the pandemic. I was chilling. I actually appreciate yeah. that. I didn't do hair. Like I needed that reset. Yeah, I was cool. 
Where did you get that um saving mentality from? A lot of like you said, a lot of that money come through you guys' hand fast. You want to blow it. Was your family mm-hmm. saver? You always been like that? So mainly from my dad, but like one of my friends, like he always used to be like, like, you need to save more, like, cause I, I spend, I like to shop a lot, like a whole lot. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I like to shop a lot, but you know, you just never know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Like, and that actually, when we had the pandemic, I was just like, dang, like this could happen again. I started saving even more because I'm oh, like, yeah. this is crazy. Like, yeah. Man. That's good that that you was even in that mind frame. So uh, how did you manage to start attracting famous people and athletes to your uh, shop? What was the first famous person you had or was was it just an athletic person from OSU Um, or whatever? Yeah, um, one of the OSU players, uh, Jalen, he actually transferred now. But um, Jalen, he was the first person to come to me. It was him and he brought somebody else with him. Then after that, he brought a third person with him. Then after that, like, it was just... It was crazy. How, how, did like, you oh handle, my how did you handle it though? Like, what was your thought? Like, what was the excitement? <laughs> when you stop morale up? Like, what was taking through that? Like, I thought that was okay. So I thought that initially, like when they came to me, I was, it was dope. I was like, oh my gosh, like, cause that's always been like one of my dreams. Like, I was like, I want to do a state player hair, and hopefully one day I can go to the drive and do the hair. So it just I manifested that. Yeah, yeah. So like that happened. That was pretty dope. And then um my homeboy K. He's a barber here in Columbus, Case Cuts. He cuts a lot of players here, majority of all of them for years and have always been. So he hit me up on Instagram, like, um, called me. I'm like, huh, what do Case want? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he hit me up on IG and I ended up calling him back. He was like, hey, he was like, um, I just cut CJ Stroud hair. He goes to the Heisman Awards tomorrow and he wants you to do his hair. I was like, when are you like today? I was like, okay, we can do that. Uh-huh. <laughs> so that like I did CJ hair for the Heinz and he texted me when he got there he was like thank you Johnisha so much like I love my hair my mom loves it and then he was like and I love your oil too like it's fire I told you I said, told I'll be trying yeah. to tell you I didn't <laughs> argue with my wife like hold on we got to get another bottle I'll be trying to use all of it you know what I'm saying oh um, yeah what I was gonna and then say he um, sent Jackson to me so it's yeah. like so um when you got the call and you want he wanted you to go down there and you knew like man this is big like what was that like even going down there being in it was you in awe was you like like what was that feeling like when I went to the draft yeah um it was crazy because like I was like CJ was gone so I know like he you know always busy and like with his family and friends and stuff so I'm like I hadn't heard from him I was like the draft coming up I know he's gonna get his hair done he's not gonna go out there like that that's the biggest but I thought maybe he probably had somebody to do it and I'm just like you know I was just like you know he hit me up so last minute I think it was like Saturday the draft was like that was like that Friday but I flew there he texted me Saturday evening hey Janisha he was like what's up um how you been I'm like I'm good you know whatever he's like oh, can I fly here to do my hair? I'm like, when, CJ? Like, today, Saturday. He was like, oh, Tuesday. I was like, um, yeah. No, he said Monday. I flew there Monday. He was like, Monday? I was like, that's cool. So we end up, I flew there. Then he got there short at, shortly after me, but we, like, pulled up to the hotel at the same time. Yeah. Did and you have I'm to like, move around your schedule or what or is your shop open? I did. Oh, Dude, oh, did. I had to I had to cancel like two or three days. But whoever so, got their hair canceled but, that day, they should have been happy for you <laughs> because that was the moment he on the biggest stage yeah. and you know, like um my stepson's um their uncle cut um Justin Fields hair. Mm-hmm. Down here in Georgia. So uh Lamar Casey, he cut Justin Fields here and you know he goes on that big stage and people ask him who did yeah. the hair, who do you know, and me just being down here in Georgia, like seeing famous people coming to the shop like it's nothing. And I'm like, man, my dude cat shout out to Calvin. Um uh, mm-hmm. Calvin Carr, he was cutting um in the shop, Lecrae was in there, uh Drewski was in there, and I'm just looking like man, these people just walking around like it's nothing, yeah. but they take their pride in that hair. And one thing I love about you, and you was doing this early, you know how rappers got a tag. When the yeah. song come on, you had a tag after they get done. Who's the best dresser? It don't matter if they don't <laughs> want to say it or not. You make them say it. I love it. I was getting charged up, like, yeah. So where did where did that come to mind? What had you doing that? 
Um, nothing. I'm just, it's just me. That's my personality. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why not a lot of people come to me, you know, like just my personality. I'll talk to you. Like that's, it's, it's like the same way with like CJ, like he is who he is like on and off of TV. Like he's a man of God. Like I yeah. love that about him. That, like, hey, I love that too about him. Yeah. Cause some people, you know, they, they do it for the media. He's not yeah. that person. Like, so that's pretty dope. I love that about him. Um, like all my players, they're really humble, super humble. Like Marv, super humble. Like, he so a lot of people come in there and they won't know until they see him. Like, and they be like, yeah. "Oh, ain't that my little young clients? Ain't that Marvin Harrison?" I be like, "Yeah, that's like, can I take a picture with you?" He be like, "Absolutely." Like, but he's yeah. not. They not like arrogant people. Yeah. Well, uh, what's been your biggest challenge you faced in being an entrepreneur during this journey? Um. My biggest challenge, um, I would say, I would say like opening up my own salon, walking away from somewhere that I was so comfortable in. Ooh. And like, it it was just like, cause it's like, yeah, you want to do it cause you want to better yourself, but then you worry about other people's feelings. And that's just me having a big heart that I have. So. I worry about other people's feelings and like. Yeah. So did you have to you have to walk out on faith doing that, not knowing how it was gonna look? What does faith look like to you? Because it seems like that's a faith step. You don't know what's gonna happen, you don't know how it's gonna be, but you just walking forward into what can happen. So it is, but I always tell people this like even if I failed as a business owner today, like I will be okay because I tried. Like me knowing that I tried something and just didn't like up and quit, I'm okay with that. Like yeah. my first three months of having my salon, I had to pay those bills and stuff by myself. But I was ready for that. I already prepared myself for that. So yeah. I was okay with that. Yeah. And I love the way that you uh you rep your cousin and his brand that he's affiliated with. Shout out Reese, uh gifted. Yeah. He got a business mindset, so it seemed like it runs in a family. It seemed like y'all family is uh, business oriented, go getters, and all like that. What does family yeah. mean to you? Family is every. I love my family. I'm crazy about my family. Anybody tell you that? So I try to keep in contact with everybody. Yeah. Like it's it's a job though. So y'all, I can't be doing that all the time. But <laughs> it's it's overwhelming because I have so many cousins. Yeah, our family is huge on both sides. So like trying to keep in contact with everybody is hard, but they know all of them. But when we together, we like this. Like, yeah. and I appreciate you. And I know you got a big heart. And I know that you are helpful because when I was going through my life journey, I was hitting you up. I'm like, she gonna be like, she getting tired. I was about to say, what's your cash now? Look, I'm asking you questions. I know time is money, so I want to sow into you know you. But you knew what you was doing, and you had me calm, and you kept me you know focused. And I'm like, I ain't used to this, you know, with the different yeah. how my you know tra hair is. Um, how do you keep up with the uh, latest styles and the ha hair trends? Do you do a lot of styles yourself? People bring you pictures. Like, how do you keep up with that? People typically bring me pictures and I like, I'll either do it how they ask or I put my own little twist to it, but I, I'd rather put my own twist to things. Yeah. So like, or, um, a lot of my clients, they pretty much get the same thing. And then I got some clients be like, do what you want. Like when you tell me do what I want, then I'm going to do what I want. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I just really come up with something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, have you but, faced any gender related challenges as a female entrepreneur in the beauty industry? You said what now? Have you faced any uh gender related um uh, challenges being a female in the um uh, beauty industry? Being that you're an entrepreneur, you're a female? Mm, not really. Nope, I haven't. Have you have you took that and used that as motivation to be great or just you just being yourself walking in who you are? Literally being myself walking in who I am. Yeah. yeah. Can you share a memorable experience working with a, a famous client? <laughs> um as far as what? What type of memory? Um experience, I, I should say. 
Um, I mean, just what well, you said the first time you said uh, about the uh, the trip down to the draft. Give us a yeah. just another because I know you got many of them. Um, or is it or is it that you do so many that it's routine now? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, when I went to the draft, I actually I met like everybody that got drafted. So, like um, Bryce Young, I met him oh, too. Okay. Super humble, he was cool. Like. When I was checking in tomorrow, actually, he walked up and he was a lot smaller than what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's so little. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man. Like, yeah, like, they really good people. Yeah. yeah um, so far. Yeah, so what, have you been thinking about, like, what is going to happen if all these NFL stars, people start hitting you up and all like that? Have you thought about that as that could be an option or you just going to know, like, when that time comes and you want to get flew out to do different hairstyles and do different uh, players that you're going to have to open your schedule up? Because if it happened once, they're going to see his hair. It's like, who yeah. do your hair? And then when you down there, hey, can you get me together? Like, that's a whole nother avenue of your brand is branding. And I remember yeah. I prayed in you know, saying you're encouraging about putting you around all the people and you being in the right places, not even knowing that you have prayed for that. So it's like, man, we're two or three are touching and gather. You know, God <laughs> is in the mix and seeing that it happens. So I'm like, man, it, it it's a thing that you, you know, your your brand is expanding because you bigger than Columbus now, but you humble mm -hmm. and you 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 maintain your character. You ain't being extra. You ain't because I at first if you wouldn't have had it on your story, or you you, you most people be like, oh, okay. I can't believe I'm doing this. You was just doing mm -hmm. like his business. I'm gonna just do what I need to do, and, and you know I love that about you as well. I think that brings a lot of people to you though, like just being who you genuinely are and just not being extra and all over the place. Like, yeah, yeah. oh, I do this and I do that. So, like, yeah, it definitely because I have 16 players that I do, so it definitely makes a difference. And I'm like, you know, that's just like oncoming. Like they they loyal. Yeah, Janisha, like even some of them that don't went to the NFL. Um, one of my clients, Ronnie, he went to the NFL. He um played for the Browns, so he was like, "Ain't nobody touching my hair." <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like, "Your hair ain't been done since I did it before the draft. I just did it here like two weeks ago." He's like, "Nobody touching my hair." I was like, "Okay." Yeah, that's the, you got a great rapport. You got a great rapport with your um. <laughs> clients and stuff so we already know you got a big heart you love him you got a lot of family members who pull on you who you pour into that could take a lot of um mental drain is on you can have you you know stress all over the place how do janisha take time for her mental health for her self-awareness to be able to breathe take it in or even have a you day do you treat yourself do you pamper yourself because you got to still make time for you how do you allow that to work with the business I literally turn my phone on do not disturb. I take my um I take two weekends off a month. Oh, that's cool. And like okay. one of the weekends, like I'll go get massages and I just turn it off. I don't want to talk to nobody, literally. Like yeah. nobody. Like I don't be talking to my mom. <laughs> but like I just like no, I be needing that sometimes. And sometimes I have my outbursts where I just cry just because I feel like overwhelmed, but that's okay. I'll be like, I'm human. It's yeah, okay to do that. I'm glad you said that because so many people, even, uh, well, you know, males, we already harbor our feelings and we think men ain't supposed to cry. But even mm -hmm. females, they think something wrong with them if they crying and um, using an emotion. They don't know where it's at. But once you bottle everything up and you guys take, because you got to think, y'all already at a disadvantage. Y'all a woman, y'all a black woman. And then, you know, yeah. living in a world society, how people view y'all, y'all not what they view y'all as, but the stigma that y'all go y'all take so much in you gotta let that out or you explode yeah so, i'm a cry baby i will cry in a minute sure will but, and it's crazy <laughs> like, you think you was hard like you and g like she don't play no games <laughs> <laughs> no i'm a straight cry baby i will cry in a minute like i cry when my feelings hurt like and then i'll be okay after i'm like what was i crying about <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Last but couple questions. Okay. Don't get you up out of here. Have being from Toledo helped your swag in a lot of ways? Being that uh, you from Toledo, giving you a different grind, a different walk. Absolutely. People always like that's the first thing people say to me. You're not from here, huh? I'm like, no. And that's so, that's <laughs> They're so like crazy. I can tell. I'll be like, yeah, because we we different for sure. Yeah. 
So what um what advice would you give a young woman that's wanting to start off to be in a beauty industry? She want to be a stylist. She want to be a beautician. She don't know where to go. She just graduated and she's just looking like, man, what do I do? What advice would you be able to give her? I feel like with this, you have to have patience. You have to have patience. A lot of these young girls I've been noticing, like everybody wants to be a cosmetologist. Everybody wants to be a barber. But when they get out, they think that clients are just going to be there. That's not how that works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to put in the work to get to where you want to be. Yeah. So like that's patience. You have to have that patience. Like when it comes to helping people, like being on time, making somebody feel good. Your energy has to be good. Leave your problems at the door. Yeah. People struggle with that, like coming into work and taking on how they feel with, you know, everybody going to have their days, but leave your problems at the door for sure. Be on time to your appointment. So, I was gonna ask you about, so if I get there. I was going to ask you about that. Uh -huh. Have you had to turn people around and say, it's over with, you passed your thing? Like, how do you handle that? So I give people a 15 minute time frame, which I think is a lot because that's a long time. But mm -hmm. if you're not there with that 15 minutes, you have to reschedule. No, then you don't care what happened, huh? Yeah. And then they'll be like, you like, do a no call, no show, you have to pay me. Like, yeah. no, they can get, so I do after our appointments. Okay. But if they do after our appointments, is $175 extra on top of whatever you're paying me. Yeah. So, like, even, like, my off days, if I work on my off days, same yeah. thing. Yeah, and that's why I appreciate this interview and you being able to come on here with me today and be able to share this to the people that's going to view it because time is something that you can't get back. And yeah. for you to even do this, I appreciate it because that's why I wanted to have this platform to be able to show that people are succeeding, people is doing great. But I also give people tips, give people motivation, allow their testimony, their story to be encouraging because mm -hmm. it's people out here that don't share information because everybody for themselves. I ain't about to give this person this advice because I'm trying to grind. I'm, I'm trying to get all their customers when it's enough for everybody out it's here. It's enough for everybody. Yeah. People don't understand that. That's why I'm just like, people are like, you okay with teaching like what you do? Yes. Just because I'm teaching, that don't mean you're going to do it the same. Yeah. Do you like, still got that school? I didn't, mm -hmm. Still got that school in that program where you helping people, teaching them? Yeah. So I still have my classes and everything. Like I do one-on-one -on -one classes. I do. And then that's another thing with a lot of these classes that people do. Like they'll do classes and it's like, say for instance, my class is five hours, right? So mm -hmm. I only let four to five people come to my class. I'll do six tops but that's it because yeah. how can i be hands-on and help all these people with this tedious yeah. tedious work and be like you it's impossible you can't help 20 people and it's just you you can't do that like y'all yeah. just taking people money yeah so i don't like having a lot of people in my class because i like actually helping people and being hands-on with each person if they have a question after the class then i don't mind helping them and most people are trying to get the numbers up so they can get the money where you thinking about yeah. the style, you thinking about what you teaching them and for them to be on point and money is not a, a thing because your style, your brand and what you pouring into them is everything. Mm -hmm. That's dope, man. That's dope, man. I really appreciate yeah. you. Man. It's been great. Tell the folks how they can get in touch with you, how they can book if you in that area or if they just want to come to where you at. How can they get in touch with you? You can find me on Style Seat. Johnisha Brown, or you can follow me on Instagram, Coda Redder. What's my name? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but you can follow me on IG. It's under Coda Redder. Follow me on Southy. Add me on Southy. Make appointment on Southy. Whatever you need on Southy. You can even schedule your classes for one on one on Southy. Johnisha Brown. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Thanks a lot, man. You've been great. And somebody is going to be definitely touched by this. I appreciate you giving your time and your effort. And I'm going to sow something into your business too, as well. All righty. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Have a good day. You too. <laughs>